I think I'd be doing pretty much everything I was doing at scale. So because when I was growing up, sports cards are what people collected, I would just be focused on whatever that version is now. You wanna live a 1% life, you have to do 1% things. Like, that's super hard to live a life where you get to travel four months a year. No, no, but think about it. This is everything. This is the whole nut that you have to, the reason you haven't figured out, you're out of your mind with what you're asking, thus you have to do ridiculously hard shit to get there. You're bailing on the hard shit within seconds. Like, every data point that I've heard so far, and it's okay, is like, no chance, let alone some chance. Because I don't think you've quantified how ridiculous what you're asking for is. Dude, I worked in a liquor store for 15 hours a day, seven days a week for years, and somehow people put that as like part of my narrative, but don't give it the respect. You want to live a 1% life, cool. You told me you wanted to build, a, you thought that building a personal brand is the way to do that. The two core things in building a, per, which is fine, the two core things in a personal brand, you bailed on immediately. Patience and practitionership, you don't want to do either. If you truly want to be successful, you have to be under the mindset and the interpretation that you are able to do anything. No matter what people tell you or how many people say that what you're doing is impossible or you can't do it, you must know that whatever you want to do is possible because you're going to be that motivated and that excited and that pumped up to go achieve whatever it is you've set out to do. Now, the only way you're going to be that excited is to find something that you truly love and find something that you're passionate about because you don't wanna be stuck doing the same monotonous task day in and day out for somebody who you don't like because it's all a waste of time and you try to move up the ladder in something that you don't enjoy, you look back on that as an absolute waste of your time and energy and thoughts. There's no amount of time that can take to become successful. It's all about putting in that hard work and eventually it will come as long as you're determined enough and focused enough and you put in enough energy and know what to focus on and figure out ways to accomplish goals in the fastest, most efficient way possible while putting in your best work every single day. The more you improve upon yourself, the higher chances of your success that go up. Because if you work on yourself and your goals just a little bit every single day, day in and day out, you will see slight improvements here and there, and those improvements over time will slowly increase and become huge improvements on your life and steps towards your goals. I think that you need to figure out what you're good at and what would you want to do. I would basically be today, I'm trying to think, there'd be so many things I'd be doing today. Like, I give a lot of that advice. I would have made bank on Snapchat filters. I, I think that one guy who did the Pokemon Go consulting, I think that was super smart. The Having the internet to buy and sell, I'm a salesman. Buying and selling, ugh, just buying stuff on in Asia and remarketing in the US. I, I think I'd be doing pretty much everything I was doing at scale. So because when I was growing up, sports cards are what people collected. I would just be focused on whatever that version is now. Sneakers, I'm telling you right now, my stories of Toys R Us and garage sales would be waking, would be waking up you know, at one in the morning and standing in line at a, at a Soho sneaker store to get that thing flipping. You know, I think the truth is, Buster, I'd be focusing on what I was strong at. And what I think I'm really good at is buying and selling. I did that with stuff my whole life. Now I do it with people's attention and the end consumer's attention. That is my strength and I would double down on that. You, my friend, need to figure out what you're best at. Is that making content on social media? Is that being a charismatic personality that I think was shining through in that question? Is that, bu- is that being a salesperson, buying, selling stuff, connecting with people? When you're 16, you have time. Remember when you were bored? Remember when you could do that? Andy, remember when you were like, I'm bored. Like, you don't have that kind of time when you grow up. And so I would take advantage of that time because that is the asset. The other thing you could do, and this works for a lot of the people that just ask questions, so I want to make sure they're going to hear this. You could start a Q&A show. Look, I always talk about watch what I do, not what I say. My reintroduction into content was the Ask Gary V show. My audience was not that big at that point because I had transitioned to business, but I went dark for two years building VaynerMedia. And the way that I reintroduced myself was off a small base to be able to create content because we weren't vlogging yet, I didn't have a podcast yet, was to start a show where people asked me questions on Twitter, which off that was my biggest base, which led to some awareness because they had to use the hashtag. So now people see they're asking me a question, so that got me by accident viewers. I then picked five of them, answered it, put it out for free, and it was incredibly valuable. You can do that with HR questions. You could literally put right now on your LinkedIn, I'm doing this, I don't know if you noticed, by the way, who's got HR macro questions? Take five of the questions from the LinkedIn comments, record either video or audio, you answering them, and then re-put out the content into the system. The HR content that I put out on LinkedIn, and obviously I'm off a big base, but it's standardized, always over indexes. It is the conversation. 
that I think there's literally 300 million different ways to win in the US, if that's how many people we have, right? Like that there is no blueprint, there is no exact way. It only comes down to being able to factor in the 40 or 50 indexes, input points, context points around your life and then navigating through that. And so what I really want is for people to understand, don't do it like me, don't do it like you, don't do it like Zucks, don't do it like Trap, don't do it like Cuban. Like spend as much time as you can. And Steph, I'll be honest with you, maybe you know the answer, I'm actually weirdly asking you. If I knew how to help people like create more self-awareness, it's what I would sell. I don't know if that comes through therapy or some system or I don't know, I really don't. So I'll go a different way, fine. But I actually think we're in a much better place than we've been for the last 60 years on this issue. Because prior to this world where we have so many more opinions and platforms, we had three channels that told everybody that thing. There was three old white guys that owned ABC and NBC and that completely pushed down to them what it was supposed to be. So now at least we have a lot more voices. Thank you all so much for watching. Please like the video, subscribe to the channel, and let us know what you thought down in the comment section below.